Uh, I'm going to bring our next guest on. Uh, Wale, let's see. I got to zoom in. There we go. I got it. All right. Peace out, Drew. Thanks for hanging out. All right, Wale, welcome to the Power Hour. Nice to have you here. First time on the show here with us. Uh, th- thanks, thanks for coming to hang out. Thanks for inviting me, man. Sounds like uh, I'm about to have some fun. Th- that's that. Uh, yes, we we here. I'll, I'll even let's let's do some fun sounds. Uh, there we go. All right, this one is a good one. Science. <laughs> it's science. All right. So so yeah, we we have some fun. We 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 promise that this is the 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 most entertaining stock market show out there we've got tons of gimmicks i, I make jokes sometimes so so yeah we're, we're glad to have you here guys and wale he, he he's a, a former nfl pro bowler he's now had a sports and entertainment at ubs uh could, could you tell us a, a little bit about what what exactly that means well yeah it means a lot actually well ultimately one me being a former athlete being a former professional athlete um we teamed up with ubs and in the sense that We're trying to make sure that we knowing the expertise that I have, knowing Bia has being the world's, you know, global wealth leader in private wealth um, and and making sure that we fill in some of the gaps and stay away from the stereotypes that a lot of the financial industry uh, uses when giving advice to athletes and entertainers. So, Really, our goal really is to just provide our sound advice that we give for four to five hundred, you know, CEOs. Um, making sure that uh, we understand that those same guidelines that we have for those clients are for this segment. Okay, and and, and what what led you here? Like 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 you know, I, I'm sure you're right. You you finished your NFL career. Yeah. I, I'm sure you 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 could have gone j- just about anywhere, right? I mean, it, it's you know, it's it's exciting. Um, what led you to 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 this business or, or this industry in particular? Was it something that you saw? Was it something that, that motivated you? I'm curious about that. Yeah. So what what has, was great great question, and it, it was just my own experience in the sense that you know I played 11 years in the NFL, made you know millions of dollars, and still didn't understand the investments that my financial advisors were wanting me to invest in. Um, more importantly, I didn't understand the jargon that financial advisors tend to speak in. So I went back and got my MBA just so I could understand my own personal uh, relationship with money and and be a better investor, be a better person that knew you know knew about their finances. And I realized that because if I'm having this issue being you know captain of a team on uh, a Pro Bowl player making millions of dollars and and I have a degree from you know a prestigious university like Indiana University and still I'm struggling with finances. I'm sure that there's a majority of, of, of the population in, in sports and entertainment that probably fall in the same category as I did. So I realized that maybe UBS um, should think about expanding this uh, athlete and entertainers division in the sense where we wanted the world to know that we understand who our clients are. We understand the communities they come from. And we understand mm-hmm. the people that are depending on them to make sure that the hard work that they have uh, achieved and the success they have achieved on the field or whether it be on the stage, um, translate to life after, after the stage. Okay. And we've got to go bears in the chat. Let's go. Um, so, so, so I, I'm curious if, you know, thinking about the lives of, of like a, a former athlete, uh, versus somebody in any other career, it, it, is it different, right? It, is the way to think about personal finance or the, the think about investing and saving, does it differ at all? Or are there specific things to think about or, or is it essentially, you know, the, the, the same services that you'd provide, like you said, for the fortune 500 CEO, you can provide to, to athletes as well. Yeah, the difference is really, uh, I think, in understanding. I think you should you should all be the same, right? We want to make sure um, that the relationship is one that is full, robust, and comprehensive in a sense that we understand who our clients are. Too many times when it comes to this segment with athletes and entertainers, the relationship from FA to you know financial advisor to client is almost too transactional. Right. Okay. We need to know exactly who who our clients are. Again, like I said, the communities they come from and the people that are depending on them. Let's use me as an example. I'm a New York City kid. My parents are uh, immigrants from Nigeria. Went to Indiana University. Played in the NFL for 11 years. After the NFL, went and got my MBA. Like I said, from George Washington University. Um, and when FAs hear that story, nine times out of ten, they tend to focus on the 11 years in the NFL. 
But we want our advisors at UBS and what our advisors at UBS do, we want them to focus on everything. Everything that I just told you about, the New York City kid, parents, my education. Um, and, and that is how we want to put those elements of our characteristics, of our families, of our communities into the advice that we give to our clients. So, so, and, and, and can, you, can you dig a little deeper there? Like, like how exactly do you do that or, or what exactly does that mean? So let's, again, we can use me for an example. Simple as this, right? At the end of the day, you know the athlete entertainer space. There, a lot of them, let's say 80 to 90%, usually want to give back to their community. So as simple as if I, when I played, I had turkey drives in New York City, right, where I would give, you know, turkey drives and meals to families in New York, um, and knowing that when I was a young kid, you know, times were tough, just my advisors being there, holding our hands and handing out turkeys with us are some of the things that are an added element to what UBS does. When it comes to private wealth, we're the best at it. Um, and what we're going to now add to that level of understanding um, and the expertise is the understanding of who our clients are. Again, the communities they, 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 and they as resources are added into the backs of our, our, our financial advisors and they now feel more empowered to help our clients move from transition from life at the field to, to life off the field. Awesome. All right. That, that's helpful. And I love the turkey drive. Round of applause. Let's go. Like I said earlier, you know, you're by yourself trading. It's a little bit weird to be clapping by yourself. But, but I, think, I think for the turkey drives, that's appropriate. You know, at least you'll, you'll warm your fingers up a little bit. Uh, and and so, so let me ask you this. Um, yeah, COVID-19, right? Uh, athletes, entertainers. Uh, I, I'm guessing that there was a lot of loss uh, income that was expected, right? Especially, you know, if, if you've got, you know, musicians are not touring, you know, certain sports seasons are disrupted, that sort of thing. So, so I'm curious, you know, how, how you helped clients through that, um, you know, what general sentiment was, et cetera. Well, you know, the thing that's just twofold, right? We understand, you know, what drives revenue within sports, right? If there's no seats in the stands, um, that's going to bring the salary cap down. If you see what happened with the NFL now um, in the new salary cap, the the projection um, was reduced from what they thought, you know, would happen, you know, pre-COVID. So going forward, some of the bigger contracts that your agent might have thought you were going to have, um, you've got to recalculate that and maybe this might not be the year to hit the free agency market or test uh, the free agency market. You might want to wait until things bounce back a little bit. But from a perspective of COVID, it's been a great time for our, our clients to really see the merit um, and the expertise of our, of our FAs. If you're struggling and worried about your finances during COVID, you know, my stance is what have you doing? What have you been doing the last couple of years, right? That should have been the time where you've been building up a strategy to uh, withstand um, a future challenge or a future headwind that might have come your way. And that's what our approach is at UBS is let's make sure that we're planning for the future, knowing, especially when it comes to athletes and entertainers, nothing is guaranteed. Um, tomorrow, things can end if you're a football player. Um, and even if you're a basketball player with COVID, if you're not playing games, you're not going to get paid. Um, so the planning process starts long before the games start, long before they get on the practice field or, or on the stage rehearsing for a play or for a TV show. You and your financial advisor should have sat down and had a plan that that is able to withstand pandemics, social issues within the country, and things that that come your way that may um, be a speed bump in in your in your rise of, of generating generating wealth. Okay. All right. That that's helpful. And 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 let let me ask this. It, you know, you you might not want to answer it, but but I'm going to ask anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, our our last guest that we had on the show was a really like buff looking dude, like very burly. And we, we asked him how many times he could bench two twenty five. I, I, I'm curious, either now or, or or in your heyday, what what was that number? At, at you know, wow, that's a great question. I, I don't remember anymore, but I think I. Around like 32, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, in, my heyday, in my heyday. Today, today, I probably can 
probably do one, maybe. I don't know. I I, I, I try not to go heavy anymore. But uh, not in my heyday, probably around like 32. So. All right, there we go. Jonah's answer was 25. Now we got 32. This is the strongest power hour we've ever had. <laughs> we've never had so much muscle on the screen at once. I I, I, I love it. 20, man. 20. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, la last question: are, are there any individual stocks or, or sectors that you like? Um, you know, and, and if not, some some final words of wisdom to leave us with would be great. Yeah, you know, again, that's the stock market is you know subjective, subjective for people, and you know, I like I like making money like like everybody else. So at the end of the day, I like to see uh, my numbers in green. Um, I know today's been a crazy day for for, for, for everyone. But really what I want to say, though, is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we do really well at managing money. And the example of, you know, the turkey drive or whatever it is, is really just us understanding the space, especially when it comes to athletes and entertainers. We want to make sure that whatever it is, whether it's your community, whether it's your personal life, your legacy, your family, we want to have a hand in that. Because um, at the end of the day, your stability when it comes to your finances really helps and it dictates how generous you can be, your involvement in the community, um, and not only just you know your involvement in, in your stock portfolio. So we want to take a holistic approach at that, and um, I'm excited to, to be to be at this firm doing. Rohan, aren't you listening? Awesome. All right, man. Well, well, it was amazing having you here on the Power Hour, and I'm going to throw this bounty out there to the chat. If you can bench 225 more than 32 times, you're next up on the show. You know, shoot me an email, Luke at Benzinga.com. There it is. Say, hey, I, I've got 33, I've got 54, whatever it is. You know, we'll, we'll bring you on too. Again, this is the strongest physically Power Hour that we've ever had. So, so. <laughs> Um, all right. All right. Wait, so producer Aaron, put, put a question up on the screen. Let, let's ask this. All right. Ask Wally what the bears need to be competitive this coming season. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson to the bears. All right. Uh, any of thoughts? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Russell went to the Russell Wilson to the bears would be an amazing opportunity for the, for Chicago. Um, he would fit really well in the city. It, it does get cold. Um, and the bears fans are just as good as, as Seattle, maybe even better in my opinion. Uh, than Seattle fans, uh, but the Bears need a lot of stuff. You know, they, they need some you know more offensive weapons. They're usually a, a gritty, hard nosed defensive type of um, of city. But Russell Wilson immediately becomes probably the greatest quarterback to play in Chicago the moment he walks in. If that ever happens, so um, Russell Wilson would be a much needed and a much appreciated upgrade for Chicago. But you know, who knows if that's even going to ever happen? But I'm sure Chicago fans are, are are wishful for that one. All right, all right, and then and then you know, my my background, we we got downtown Detroit right here. That's where I am. Life lifelong Lions fan. Uh, you know, first mm. year I didn't go to the Thanksgiving game this year for 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 COVID, but I did spend Thanksgiving with my mom for the first time, so that was also enjoyable. Um, for the first, but, time, right. first time, first time, or first time in a long time. Uh, first time since I was a child. Yeah. This, okay, okay. This, this Thanksgiving was always, you know, me and dad go to the game. That's what it was. Oh, got it. Oh, As an adult, it was the first time. So hey, I played, I played in a few of those games, had a good time. I love Detroit, man. Great city, great fans. And it's always great playing, um, Thanksgiving in Detroit because you're indoors and it's warm and, you yeah. know, hopefully you're playing to get that Turkey at the end of the game. The there we go. Game. There we go. Awesome, man. Well, hey, th thanks for taking time out of your day to come hang out with us on the Power Hour. Um, I told you this will hopefully be the most fun stock market show you, you do. Absolutely. So, so, so we, we really appreciate it. Again, guys, out there at home by yourselves, you know, it's, it's okay to clap by yourself. Uh, th thanks a lot for joining.